Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Tuesday, September 19th, 2023 meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works. I'm also the Chair of the Commission. I'd like to announce the audio and video recording of this meeting. Um, and we will get going here because we do have a quorum and it is uh, just a little bit after four o'clock. So Beth, if you are ready, please call the roll. Anna? Here. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Devin? Yes. Diana? Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Uh, Jamil is not here, right? Right. Uh, Carolyn. Yeah. yeah. Adam. He's been tr trying to connect to audio for a long time. Yeah. So he's looks like he's here, but he's not connected to audio. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even without uh, Adam, we do have a quorum, um, so we can get started. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Okay, first up is uh, public comment. So uh, I see uh, members of the public here. If you wish to address the commission about anything, uh, you are welcome to speak. I just need your name and address for the record. I do ask if you are uh, here to talk to us about a, an item that is on the agenda, if you just hold your comments until that item actually comes up. It just makes for a, a more orderly process and a more orderly meeting. Um, so please hold your comments until your agenda item comes up. But if you're here to speak to us about something that's not on the agenda, uh, you're welcome to do that now. So is there anyone who wishes to speak to the commission about something not on the agenda? All right, so I see Kate's hand up. So Kate, I just need your name and city or town of residence and ask you to limit your comments to three minutes if you would. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kate Queenie, and uh, my address is 16 Jason Court. I'm a resident of Amherst, uh, and I work in Northampton. You might be know who I am because I wrote an August column in the Gazette about safety. Uh, so my comment today is to expand the column in a way I further discussion among your commission in the future. In case any of you don't know, I was hit by a car on West Street in December 2022. My primary goal today is not to advocate for pedestrian safety on West Street or to suggest that site should take priority over others in the city or even to rehash my column, but I wanted to share a couple of observations about your commission's role and please know that I do so with a ton of gratitude for the work that you all do. Uh, your listed charge, as I'm sure you all know, includes working to, quote, hear and address citizen concerns and promote a safe, efficient, and sustainable multimodal transportation system for the city. Uh, from public records, it seems that your commission and your bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee were not informed until months later uh, that a pedestrian, me, was hit and seriously injured on West Street. Um, I don't understand how you can be expected to promote a safe transportation system if you're not even informed by the city about instances when that system fails. And if you'd like to understand why I think there's strong evidence from the NPD's really good report that my accident was the result of a failed system and not just individual driver error, I'm happy to discuss that at any time. It also seems like the city has no clear system for collecting and sharing and using data about near misses. Uh, so those are cases where by sheer luck, a pedestrian or a vulnerable road user narrowly avoids fatality or serious injury. So uh, Cindy at DPW told me when I asked that reports of near misses should be sent to the DPW email. So recently I suggested a friend do that when he told me he saw someone else almost get hit in that same crosswalk. He did, and he got a response, short response from Cindy. He also emailed Chief Casper and, and got a, a response from her. But my question is, how are how is that data recorded, uh, let alone used to guide action? And I wonder if your commission was informed that there was a near miss. If the DPW is actually a useful place to report these incidents, I can't find any way the general public would know that uh, from your website. And I don't have any understanding of what the DPW is doing with that information. Um, People who are hit or almost hit by cars don't submit traffic calming requests, but I think you want to know about their experiences as well so you can use them to guide your work. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Kate. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the commission and something not on the agenda? 
Okay, I don't believe I see any other hands. Okay, with that being said, next up is approval of minutes from the prior meeting, which is August 15th, 2023. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? I'll make the motion. Devin, second. second. Thank you, Devin. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie, still not here? Uh, Devin? Yes. Diana? Here. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam? I think we're still having some audio problems with you, Adam. Can't hear you. Try again. Yeah, can't hear you. Okay, you may need to disconnect and reconnect, but uh, we definitely can't hear you. Uh, well, I can't hear you. I just want to confirm that others can't as well. Yeah. Right, Cindy? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, so that'll pass with a smaller uh, number of positive votes. Six yeses. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next is reports from departments and subcommittees. I have a couple of updates from DPW. Winter Street has been paved, so work is substantially complete on that uh, really significant uh, utility and uh, just kind of overall road reconstruction project. Um, and, and I will say um, it, that uh, we're very grateful for that job to have been done. There were some really significant uh, utility problems on that street that had been addressed. So um, thanks to everyone um, who was uh, involved in that, uh, just within the neighborhood, it was very uh, disruptive, but we got through it. Um, also working on the Safe Routes to School project, MassDOT contracted with Gomes Construction Company to complete improvements to enhance pedestrian safety near the Bridge Street School. That project is substantially complete and the contractor is just waiting for delivery of some new signs. The Damon Road project continues, continues. Gagliaducci Construction is working on driveways and catch basin frames. Uh, motorists should continue to expect delays. Um, the contractor will be working on the full depth reconstruction from Industrial Drive to King Street, and that project is expected to stretch into next year. Uh, pavement markings, we've had a lot of delays uh, getting our contractor mobilized um, due to just terrible weather all summer. Um, they can't stripe in the rain, so that's the delay. Um, typically, our roadways are all restriped by now. So um, they are working. They've done some work out in Ward 6, um, but we're restriping the entire city. So double yellow center lines, white edge lines, speed hump markings, arrows, and all crosswalks, they will be painting overnight. The good news is, is that once they mobilize, they move very, very quickly through the city. Um, and, uh, you know, they're typically out of here within a couple of weeks. Uh, so those are DPW updates. Carolyn, do you have anything? Sorry. Um, no, not at this time. Thanks. Oh, geez. Sorry. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have uh, any other updates for the commission? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we will move to matters before the commission. So first is a proposed ordinance relative to stop signs and Olander Drive and Ford Crossing. So I will read the ordinance. Uh, this is an ordinance relative to stop signs on Olander Drive and Ford Crossing, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled as followed. As follows, section one, that section 312-113 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. 312-113, schedule 12, stop and yield intersections. Isolated stop signs, stop intersections are established at the following locations. Location, Olander Drive, direction of travel north at the intersection of Ford Crossing, location Ford Crossing, direction of travel east at the intersection of Olander Drive. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? So moved. So, so moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, Beth, are you all set with um with who made motions there? Um I didn't hear who who 
uh, presented the motion and who seconded it? Or is that not what was going on? It, yeah, Adam, we, did you? Um... I did. Okay, thank you. And Devin seconded it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so by way of discussion, um, and then I will turn this over to uh, Councillor Foster, but um, we've done a considerable amount of work up in Village Hill, kind of going intersection by intersection, looking at where stop controls may be necessary as Village Hill gets um, built out, we have, uh, you know, increased traffic and increased uh, conflict points at intersections. And so this is uh, kind of the uh, latest addition to the stop signs that we have been adding in the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, th this is uh, more about uh, sightline problems uh, than anything. Um, a lot of these um, uh, corners are sort of sharp and, and um, you know, visibility can be obscured and, and that creates potential for conflict. So, Councillor, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add to those comments. Well, you did a great job um, describing them. Thank you. Um, on the opposite end of, or on Olander Drive, where it continues past Ford Crossing, it's not shown on the map, but that's a private drive that goes to a co-housing community and then into a new mixed income, I believe it's 57 apartments um, into a building back there that's on private road. Um, I've talked with the folks from co-housing um, and I've talked with the community builders, which manages the apartment building. And it's sort of the, the question now is logistics, um, but they're very open to placing a stop sign on the private road side as well, so that that, that intersection would have a stop sign on, on all three sides, but um, we can only discuss the city streets here. I just wanted to flesh out that little bit on the other side. Um, there's wide support from the Village Hill neighborhood um, for, for that, um, and they've been appreciative of the of the signs and, and the efforts along the way. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, Beth, can you please have the record reflect that Diana uh, has joined us? Thank you. Okay, any uh, other comments uh, or questions from the commission uh, about this proposed ordinance? Carolyn, go ahead. So I maybe you said this and I missed it. Are you suggesting that the warrants are met for all these locations? Like, um, and maybe you could describe a little bit about what the warrants are. I, sure. So it's just the location circled in red on the, the plan that's on the screen. Um, and so warrants for stop signs can be um, it can be traffic volumes. You know, when you have when you meet sort of a certain level of traffic at certain times of the day going in either direction. Um, and it can also be about sightline issues. Um, in this case, um, it, you know, the the volume warrants are not met, but the sight line issues are. This is um, sort of consistency in intersections within the Village Hill area. There's also a um, kind of an engineering judgment piece of this. So we don't like inconsistency. Um, you know, we've had a, a consultant study the entire area um, and make recommendations for various intersections. We put a lot of stop signs in here. Um, and this is kind of the next piece of that. So the warrants that we're hitting at this point are sight lines and engineering judgment for consistency purposes. Any other comments or questions from the commission on this? Okay, any comments from uh, any members of the public who are here with us on the proposed stop sign in this location? Okay, I don't uh, see anyone. All right, I believe we have a motion for a positive recommendation on this proposed ordinance on the floor. If there's no further discussion, if there's no further discussion uh, among the commission, uh, Beth, please call the roll. Anna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Oh, hold on a second, Beth. Let me. Um, let me unmute him just to stand by. Yes, thank you. I saw you at uh, 414, Jamie. Is that, did you come in earlier than that? 
Uh, it was a few minutes before that, but yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam? Yes. Oh, there you are. That's nine yeses. Okay. Thank you, Beth. So this ordinance will um, be submitted to the clerk of the council for inclusion on the next uh, city council agenda for referral to legislative matters. Okay, next is discussion of parking requests for the Prospect Street corridor, 49 Prospect Street, 169 Prospect Street, 193 Prospect, and by Adair Place. Um, so DPW has received multiple parking requests on the Prospect Street corridor um, in the locations that I just noted. Um, and residents have submitted requests to us to take a look at parking along this corridor because the chief complaint is that um, there is a very difficult visibility trying to move in and out of side streets off of Prospect Street. So to be clear, this agenda item is to have a discussion um, among residents on this corridor to kind of hear what their experiences are in, in trying to move around and trying to you know, park in the corridor and trying to bicycle in this corridor, trying to move in and out of side streets, um, who's using the parking, what are they using the parking for? And this is meant to be a discussion um, to kind of hear what people's experiences are and then to try to determine what appropriate next steps are because I, I think we can agree that it's a heavily trafficked corridor um, and we wanna do what we can to make it safer for everybody. So I have had some conversations with Councillor Moulton on this. And I think before I go any further, it might be helpful to hear from uh, the Councillor just kind of about his efforts and his thought on this as we have had a, a little bit of back and forth on this. So Councillor, if you wouldn't mind, uh, put you on the spot here, um, go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Director. I uh, appreciate the opportunity and, and first I want to thank the DPW and the contractor for getting the Winter Street reconstruction done that was delayed from last summer and it's great to have it substantially finished before uh, this summer is is, is over. Um, so I, I appreciate uh, the bundling of these requests uh, for uh, uh, improving the sight lines uh, for motorists coming off many of the side streets, starting with Warfield Place up through Adair Place uh, on the prospect. Uh, it's a longstanding concern uh, from the neighbors. And I should mention uh, that not only am I representing the neighbors of this, it's about a three quarter mile stretch of the Prospect Street corridor and the side streets as their city councilor, but I live on Perkins Avenue. I've lived there for 44 years. So I, I live this uh, every day as, as well. And I, I'm addressing particularly the last three requests. Uh, the first one uh, for 49 Prospect Street, that, that is actually in Ward 4, and that is a different request to uh, eliminate blocking of uh, a driveway there. And I, I know that the residents of that address um, are aware of this meeting. But I am speaking to the other three requests that are all in Ward one, and they're uh, very similar. Part of the problem is simply uh, 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 adequate enforcement of existing ordinances that prevent parking too close to intersections, fire hydrants and driveways and so forth. But it, the, the safety issue really goes beyond that. Uh, and I have talked to probably uh, 25 or so uh, residents, uh, homeowners, renters, both in that Prospect Street corridor, as well as on the side streets, uh, Perkins, uh, Stoddard, Winter, and Adair Place. And there's near unanimity uh, in, in understanding the experience that, that uh, folks have of being very difficult to, to emerge onto Prospect Street because of parked vehicles uh, on both sides of those intersections. And it's, it extends beyond where 
uh, cars should not be uh, already should not be parking. Uh, so one of the things that I learned is that uh, most people who uh, uh, who who live uh, on Prospect Street, uh, either homeowners or, or particularly homeowners, they don't uh, regularly park on Prospect. Uh, they have typically driveways or at least rights of way uh, behind their homes. Uh, and so they are using already off street parking. And uh, particularly for those who have right of ways that they access via the side streets, they completely agree with the difficulty of, uh, of uh, the, the current uh, sight lines. And uh, however, there is a need to preserve some parking. So there's a balance here that I, I feel that, uh, uh, that, that we need to recognize. There's a need for parking on prospect for some renters, uh, for visitors, uh, for uh, uh, there's at least one in-home business uh, that has customers. There is a need for occasional uh, spillover from the lots at the synagogue as well as the Northampton Survival Center and, uh, and also for dropping off and picking up at uh, Metal Arc uh, at a daycare, child care. Uh, so I'm I'm supporting, and I I I like the idea uh, of the the three requests for uh, removing uh, some uh, parking between Perkins and Prospect Court. Uh, the the resident uh, who lives at the corner of Perkins and Prospect who would be most affected by this has no objection to that. He parks behind. His uh, his home uh, and and uh, and uses Perkins Avenue and agrees that there's a problem there, uh, and the same uh, with the, uh, the the parking request for eliminating some parking southwest uh, of Winter Street to about 193 Prospect. The homeowner who lives at the corner there of of uh, of winter and prospect also has a right of way a driveway behind his house that he uses uh, winter street to access he agrees that there's a problem and he has no objection to eliminating the parking in front of his house and finally uh, i agree with the recommendation to or the request to eliminate a couple of parking spaces immediately adjacent to a deer place but, uh, there are nine a total of nine spaces that are marked between uh, Adair and Murphy Terrace. This would most affect Meadowlark uh, child care. And I talked to the owner of Meadowlark. Likewise, she knows that there's a problem emerging from Adair and she agrees that uh, eliminating those spaces would not affect uh, the child care uh, operation. Uh, she's most concerned about preserving the three spaces that are directly in front of metal lark to use for pickup and and drop off so i uh based on uh based on the, the conversations that i've had uh i will support uh uh if if this commission recommends uh to uh to to uh, uh uh, to, to agree with the requests that have been made by by uh, residents uh, uh, of uh, Perkins, uh, Winter, and, and Adair Place, I will I will support all those. I don't think that it will have a uh, I, I don't think it'll have any unintended consequences, and I think that it will still leave um, it will still preserve parking along this corridor of Prospect in in areas that aren't impeding uh, the sight lines that will be sufficient. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, I just have a couple of comments on this. And, and again, just to uh, clarify for folks who are on the call, um, there is no uh, ordinance change on the table today. This is simply a discussion to hear everybody's um, experience and comments so that we can make the best decision possible. Um, Prospect Street is is quite long, uh, over a mile, 7,180 feet. The, um, the road width varies between uh, uh, 24 to, to 26 feet. 
uh, wide. There are bicycle lanes on both sides of the street between Prospect Ave and Finn Street. Um, so this is about 4,400 feet long worth of bicycle lanes. Um, one of the complaints that I hear the most um, on Prospect Street is that people are parked in the bike lane. So according to Section 312-80 of the Code of Ordinances, um, no vehicle shall park within a designated bike lane. Um, but that's uh, definitely a phenomenon that, that we see happening on Prospect Street. So one of the things that we kind of want to hear from people um, who travel this corridor and who live on this corridor is, it, you know, if we, you know, we we have several requests for people who are looking to sort of surgically remove parking in various potential conflict areas at intersections, or do we look at the entire corridor and say, you know, maybe we we kind of create an area where there's no parking at all and look to do something more robust with the bike lane. So that's, you know, there are a, a lot of different scenarios or something in between. So there are a lot of different scenarios here. So I just wanna kind of throw out those engineering and general comments um, as we continue the discussion. So uh, is, do any members of the commission have any comments? Uh, Carolyn, go ahead. Right. Yeah, so I think your um, sort of question about whether we look at this holistically versus just these little snippets of um, requests that come in from individual blocks um, makes sense because I wonder if we, you know, if we look at a wholesale traffic calming for the corridor, um, slower vehicle, I mean, there are two things. One is on-street parking has a traffic calming effect, right? So the more we remove those, then we're sort of backtracking on some of that effect. So to the extent that we can create more traffic calming, I think maybe some of these sight line distance, the sight distance issues might disappear if the cars are going more slowly because it will allow cars to edge out and see, okay, they've got clear space. They don't have to bolted across the intersection to go left or to turn right because they know those oncoming cars are much slower. I mean, there might be some sight distance issues no matter what because of the topography um, of some of those side streets as the entering um, onto the prospect. But um, I, so I, I think it makes sense to look at it before we start as you said, surgically removing individual spots. The other thing I would say is I think the bike lane did a lot. The striped bike lane had some effect on um, traffic calming because even before it was striped, of course, it was much wider. And um, that sort of gave the impression that you could go a lot faster. And um, I, I know from living in that area that people do park in the bike lane illegally and especially when there are big events at the Y or high holidays at the synagogue or other holidays at the synagogue that people sort of think, okay, it's holiday, bike lanes go on holiday too, um, or events, you know, take precedent over the bike lane. So that is a problem um, that maybe could be solved in sort of rethinking all the the sort of how we allocate that space from curb to curb. Okay. Thanks, Carolyn. Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, Carolyn said a lot of what I was thinking. So just wanted to echo looking at it holistically. I think um, Prospect Street does have that illusion when you're biking, well, because it goes downhill a bit toward Finn. Um, or driving, it does have an illusion of of being a fairly wide space for people driving. So um, wanted to point that out that that removing the parked cars will improve the sight lines for people coming out of the side streets, but will increase the visual feel there, the amount of pavement um, on prospect. And also Carolyn brought up um, parking for the Y. And I think that that's something just to consider um, because I know the parking spots by Meadowlark and along prospect, um, I believe they were changed um, to be time limited parking in park because people would would 
would park there. But the, the one thing I would have concern about too, if we without if we didn't look at the corridor holistically, um, but just remove little spots here and there, that we may end up pushing some of the problem into the side streets as well. Um, because as mentioned, people are parking there for the synagogue or Metal Arc or for the Y, like that people are probably still going to end up driving and parking there. So I just want to be really thoughtful um, about what what that impact is on the streets um, that are feeding into Prospect um, as well. And then finally, I think just a plug for looking at where Prospect and Finn meet. Um, I, that's um, an intersection that I think is awfully confusing um, for drivers and cyclists, the way the, um, the, the, I think you expect the stop signs to control more than they do. Um, and I, I think that, that that's just an area that, that gets very confusing for folks. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah, and, and I mean, these comments from uh, both Councilman Foster and Carolyn sort of underscore our challenge of, you know, parked cars um, definitely have um, a, a good part and a bad part. Okay, any other comments from the commission? Diana, Thanks. go ahead and see your hand up. Thank you. I was just curious, I definitely echo the the idea of looking at this holistically and looking to see, you know, if we're surgically talking about removing parking spots, are there any places where Prospect Street is working right? Um, you know, I, I know that the road kind of varies and has different features up and down. On the west side of Adair Place, there are those specifically marked spots, and I'm curious about that and whether anyone thinks that that has a beneficial effect by having the parking you know, more specifically delineated. And maybe that's something where if we had specific spots that could keep people away from residence driveways to maybe help them come in or out. So it seems like there's a lot, a lot of different types of features or traffic calming. Um, I definitely agree that Prospect and Finn, that's a very confusing intersection. And if I've heard and, and seen a couple of near misses, especially when pedestrians are in the mix right there and there's a lack of a stop sign in one place. So I think this is a great street for us to take a look at in general, but I think doing it holistically and keeping everything on the table is is probably going to best serve the, the problem just based on what I've heard so far. Thanks for your comments. I can just address um, one piece of this when you talk about actually defining parking spaces. Um, it, you know, that's something that we typically do like in central business districts um, and we do it sparingly because they become uh, maintenance considerations. Um, so it's a kind of something that we have to go through and we have to update um, or you're sort of back to nothing. Um, so it is something from a maintenance standpoint that we do very sparingly and not typically outside of downtown areas, uh, just, just to address that. Thank you. Good, good to know. Okay, any other members of the commission have any comments before we open this up for public comment? Yeah, Donna, I just wanted to point out. Yep, go ahead, Nancy. I just wanted to, to I, I definitely support a holistic approach to this. And I, I just wanna make sure that we remain sensitive to the fact that we do have three um, agencies, organizations, uh, this, be it the synagogue, the survival center, the Y, um, these are community-based organizations um, that serve the community in one way or the other. And that um, although we need to be sensitive to obviously uh, traffic safety, we need to be sensitive to the need for parking um, in this general area. So I, I think that we have to be careful to make sure that we see all aspects of this. Yeah, I appreciate that, Nancy, thank you. Any other comments from anyone on the commission? Okay, um, I would invite members of the public who are here for this conversation to um, please raise uh, either your actual hand or your virtual hand. It's easier if you raise your virtual hand so we can see you. So um, first up, all right, I see, and I'm sorry, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, Maria Acosta Cruz. We'll unmute yeah. you. 
do we have a oh here we are it, yep go ahead yeah. so i just need uh, your I, I just need your name city and town of residence and and again if yeah. you could limit mm -hmm. your comments so that uh we can give everyone an opportunity or you'd appreciate it Abs go ahead absolutely uh you want me to start yes uh, okay please, go you ahead. um well well uh, my name is william abrashkin or hank and uh you pronounced my wife maria's name perfectly uh good job uh, this is Maria Costa Cruz, my wife, and we both live on Adair Place. Uh, and I've been listening to this discussion, and boy, there are a lot of good points raised. Uh, there, it's uh, a lot of things have to be taken into consideration. Um, the um, I, I, uh, Ms. Lascala, thank you very much, and also to the commissioners who have spoken, and uh, particularly uh, Commissioner Moulton, who's been very uh, attentive and very supportive to this issue, who also as we, as we just learned, deals with it himself. Um, the uh, problem with uh, Adair Place actually arose uh, when, they, when there was a repaving of Prospect Street and the uh, new, um, new parking spaces were installed. Parking was not allowed so close to Adair. Can't remember what year that happened, but parking was not allowed so close to Adair uh, before that happened. And now there are parking spaces almost right up to the intersection. So uh, it, it really, it, it really is. Uh, there we go. Yep, uh, perfect. <laughs> That's great. Um, I, I should mention that the parking on the uh, the side, I'll just say, closest to town. Uh, that that's not really a problem because there's an extensive no parking zone there, which does work quite well. Naturally, occasionally people will park there when they shouldn't, but by and large, it works very well. So it's really on the other side, uh, the side going as you're exiting a dare place, going to your right, looking to your right, where you really just can't see coming out, and you have to go right out into the middle of Prospect Street, really, in order to see traffic coming into town uh, on the other side of Prospect. And that's, uh, boy, I'm surprised there has not been an, there have been a few near misses, but uh, so far we've gotten off. So uh, even though I certainly uh, agree with a holistic approach, approach, there are a lot of different considerations here for sure. Uh, I it, it would be very very helpful uh, if we could get some relief on those parking spaces while the process is going on. I really appreciate uh, that uh, Councillor Moulton said that Meadowlark uh, also sees the problem. And those spaces are right in front of its facility, or at least near its, its facility. And uh, if if they don't object to that, and they think they have enough parking without those uh, spaces for drop off and and a pickup, then that's I think that's a very important consideration. Uh, by the way, Meadowlark is a wonderful neighbor. They're they're just very very pleasant to work with, and uh, people sometimes complain about this and that, but uh, the sound of happy children playing is just a delight to have as a neighbor. Uh, let's see, before I end, if I want to um, uh, add anything else. Uh, I, I have, uh, if, 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 if cars, if, if people want to park their cars on a dare place, as long as they park in legal spots, of course, they're entitled to do that. And uh, from our point of view, that would really be preferable to having them park in those spaces on Prospect Street, because if they're parking on a dare, it's three minutes, just so you know. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. It's three minutes now. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll end up. Um, uh, just uh, if they're parking on a dare, it does not impede one's vision. So I really uh, would request your assistance in dealing with this problem, and I'd like to thank you all very much for having this hearing. Great. Thanks for your comments. We appreciate it. Okay. Next up is Julie Bianco. Hi, this is Julie. Sorry, I am driving to another meeting, so I apologize for not being on camera. Um, so I am actually a resident of Hamden, Mass. However, I am a native of Northampton um, with relatives on Massasoit Street. I'm also the CEO at the YMCA. So first of all, thank you for all you do for the city. Um, and I actually agree <laughs> that those parking spots that are closest to the intersection of Massasoit and Adair Place, the first and maybe the second parking spots do make it very difficult to turn out either 
um, taking a left from Massasoit under prospect or the right off, out of our dip off of Adair, sorry. Um, however, I, I, we desperately need parking. So the rest of the parking spaces, if those went away, at least on the Y side, it would be very challenging for us. Cause we're, you know, as you know, we already have people parking on the street, but I do agree. And I've heard from our members and our neighbors that it's really tough to turn out of Massasoit street. So I'm happy to participate in any parking study in any way we can. Okay, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, the screen says Laurel and Jeff. Okay, hi. I'm actually not Jeff, um, and but this is Laurel. Um, um, I'm Dee Dee Doherty. I'm across the street, but my microphone wasn't working, so I was invited over here. I'm at 18 Stoddard Street, and the name is Deirdre Doherty. It showed up as Dee Dee Doherty um, on the Zoom uh, message. Um, so Stoddard has experienced the problems that these other streets have cited, and uh, ostensibly, there it's it is as as um, Stan mentioned enforcement um, at the entry onto Prospect that would make a big difference for us. It may be benefit we may benefit from um, more specific marking of parking spots and hashes kind of like there are towards Finn on our side of the street um, to help with deterrence so people are less likely to park in an inappropriate location. Um, but um, that 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 would ben we would benefit from a look at all of the marking, and we recognize it's a maintenance issue. But this is a one a major corridor coming into town, one we in expect people to use for bicycling, um, and which has a, you know at least three. And you could name the florist business on the corner as another significant business with traffic flow. Um, as warranting sufficient attention to the parking and the traffic impacts they bring. But I, and I do think possibly it's trucks servicing one or another of the homes or businesses that may have blocked the bike lane, but it is not a, something I commonly see, I will actually say. I will say very, you know, we are concerned in our street that we have to get up into the bike lane in order to um, be able to adequately see to our left, to the lane of traffic we're going to enter immediately. Um, so when people park there, that's a problem. That would be between Stoddard and Perkins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it for us, I guess. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Didn't wanna cut you off. Appreciate your comments, thanks for being here. Okay, next is Francine. Okay, well, uh, I live uh, on Winter Street, and uh, just to give some testimony, it is terrifying often to try to get onto Stoddard Street from Winter Street. So I definitely support uh, doing something about the sight lines. And I want to say it's not just where people park, it's who is parking there. Because, for example, there is a... Um, a moving truck that often parks in front of the gray house you can see, which makes it even if they're, I've talked to the owner and he's tried to park a little farther back, but even doing so. So I wonder if there's some way to restrict who can park on the street that it isn't trucks. He says he's within the regulations that we have now, but I wonder if that could change. And, you know, I like the word holistic, but I have to say it makes me extremely nervous because I don't know what you're talking about. So I really want to um, endorse what I, I forget the person's name, the commissioner's name said about being sure that we do retain parking for the big institutions on Prospect Street. And also, I don't agree, agree with the resident on Adair Street. I would people on my street, I didn't think of this before, are very concerned about parking then becoming parking on our street as opposed to Prospect Street. So I think, you know, if you mean holistically taking all that into account, I, I totally agree. Um, as for parking in the bike lanes, I would just say, why isn't there enforcement 
uh, against that, as well as um, the speed limit on the street. Uh, I mean, that would solve a number of problems. And also, I think people don't realize uh, that, you know, there's a certain number of feet you're supposed to park from the intersection and maybe just some signage that said no parking beyond this point, as opposed to putting actual spaces in would help a lot. So that's just what I think. Okay, thanks for those comments. Thanks. Okay, Alexander, we'll unmute you in a moment. Go ahead. Hi there, thank you so much. My name is Alexander Leger Small. Uh, I am a resident of Holyoke, but I am here representing the Northampton Survival Center today. Um, thank you all for having this conversation. We are currently uh, participating in a little bit of a traffic study right now because we are having some issues with our driveway. So this comes at a very uh, good time in our planning. Um, I, I wanna thank Nancy for pointing out the three aid organizations and how it is important for the street to be open for our clients. Um, I just want to give a little information on what part of the street the survival center is using and when it is being used. Uh, we are just using the space between our driveway down to the synagogue and a little bit further down to the water bed. Uh, that period of time can be anywhere from 9 a.m. through about noon on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. These are clients who our driveway does not open up until about 15 minutes before our distribution starts. Uh, so these are clients who are taking it upon themselves to line up on the street. Uh, we have had some request from the synagogue and the, their whole campus next door for us to use our volunteers to direct their traffic coming out of their driveway during that period of time because people can't see around our cars and we've worked with them and put some cones uh, on the street inside of the bike lane just to make sure that our clients aren't parking right up against their curb cut. Um, and we have seen some effectiveness with that. Um, I think, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. We're, we're very open to working together on this, um, but until we reach a place where the survival center can have longer hours and allow clients to come back into the center to get their food, we will still see a lot of our clients coming in cars and that will lead to overflow onto the street. So yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander, for, for being here to speak with us. We appreciate it. Okay, any other members of the public um, have any comments for us? Um, I see iPad three waving. Um, so let's see if we can find you in the participant list and uh, Hi. you go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Linda Kamick. I live on the corner of State and Perkins. My driveway enters in on Perkins. I use Perkins a lot. And I actually am the one that wrote that I would like to have some uh, no parking here to corner as we exit Perkins going on to Prospect. It is almost impossible to see cars coming around the bend from Finn Street onto Prospect. They sort of speed up as they're coming around and if there's cars parked there, you really can't see them until you're almost on Prospect Street yourself. So it's pretty dangerous. Um, I know the idea of a comprehensive study is, is you know, um, as an administrator is, is a great idea and a way to do it, but I think you can do that and still have some initial aids for the people who are having difficulty exiting their little side streets. Could put no parking here to corner, which would make it easier for people to see uh, cars coming toward them. And um, 
you know, right now, sometimes I find I'm going all the way to, you know, uh, down to where the light is, just leaving Perkins and going down because if there's a lot of traffic, it's impossible to actually see. And at first I, and I'm just cautioning this because as winter comes, it gets more difficult. The top of Perkins hardly ever melts. It is icy all winter long. So going up and then trying to look out to see if cars are coming on the left is very tricky. So please do something. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Brett, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Brett Constantine, Northampton. Um, I am a member of the Bicycle Pedestrian Subcommittee. Thanks all commissioners for your work on this. I think that um, my comments could go long, 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 but my main comment in this conversation today is just to make sure that you are aware that if we're looking at the whole street, one of my pet peeves is the bike lane heading downhill. Uh, this would be approximately across from the water department. So downhill from the big organizations um, where it gets narrower. And especially in the winter time when there are plow piles, it's unusable um, and really needs to you just need to exit the bike lane because it's hardly there and in the first place. And then secondly, if there's even a few inches of snow in the, ra in the road, um, it becomes impassable. Um, so that just what, if we're looking at the width of the road and the, and the and striping and all the things, that's one of my uh, safety pet peeves on this corridor. Thanks, look forward to the rest of the conversation. Okay, thanks Brad. Okay, any other comments from anyone in the public? Um, Ernest, I see you waving your hand, so we'll try to find you in the um, in the participant list. Just looks like Ernest Senecal, Cindy, if you could. I, I've been clicking it. There should be a message on your computer to tell you to unmute. There you go. Hello. Okay, hi, go okay. ahead. Hi, hi, good afternoon, thank you. Um, my name's Ernest Senecal. I live at 219 Prospect Street, lives here for 34 years. So here's my thoughts on this. Um, when they widened Prospect Street and put in bike paths a number of years ago, six, seven years ago, that took away half the parking on Prospect Street because people used to park on both sides of Prospect Street. There's a fair amount of multi-family uh, housing. The dry, while there are driveways for a lot of the houses. The driveways are usually small and somewhat limited. Um, and uh, so there is a need for parking people's relatives, visitors, people working on your houses park all the time. And my wife has a business at 219 Prospect Street. So I'm concerned about the, when I hear holistic, I, I'm a, uh, I, I'm, I, I really um, uh, concern that suddenly there's going to be no parking there. Other people have spoken about events at the synagogue. You have the survival center, the Y. There's a need for parking. Uh, there's a need for better enforcement. Uh, I've seen, I walked the dog three times up this road. I've walked this road a gazillion times. Um, for the most part, what you're seeing right now uh, is the way it looks during the day. Uh, the, the, most of the parking is down toward the Finn quarter. I understand the people that have issues down there, uh, but there is already an ordinance for 20 feet from a side street. You know, a pretty economical way would be just to put um, uh, parallel lines and most people are smart enough not to park where that is. Uh, I think it's a little overboard to, uh, I agree with Mr. Moulton's uh, uh, analysis and what he'd like to see as far as the more surgical uh, approach, I but I, I do think it's a little um, a little much uh, to take away all the parking from Winter to 193 Prospect Street. I walked by that twice today to see how far that was. Uh, 
I think that's a little overboard. Uh, I do think that if you uh, you start banning the, the the parking on this street, people are going to park. I'll tell people to come visit me, park on the side streets, and then you're going to have issues on the side streets. I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm retired. I'm pretty observant. I was an attorney for 34 years. I, I notice things. I uh, mentally uh, reserve things. And uh, there isn't that many bikes that use this street. You got a bike path that runs parallel. My biggest concern on this street, if you want to talk about bikes, are people coming right down. You've got it right there in front of you, right down <clears throat> past the synagogue, past the water department, and then come down that hill toward my house. And I'm walking out with an eight pound Yorkshire Terrier at nine o'clock at night when it's pitch dark. And I got some kid going down the sidewalk at 20 miles an hour. So uh, that's pretty dangerous. And uh, um, uh, the most dangerous thing I've seen on Prospect Street. I Excuse sympathize me, that's with- about three minutes, just okay. so you're aware. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. If you could, yeah, it. if you could just finish up because we, we get a lot of folks here. So yeah, we appreciate your comments. Thank you so Thanks. much. Okay, any other comments for us from any members of the public? I want to make sure we give everyone an opportunity to speak if we could. Okay, I don't see any hands virtual or otherwise. Um, I, I just have a kind of a clarifying comment. When we talk about looking at, at a, a road like this holistically, this is what we would call a corridor. Um, and there are problems and conflict points at multiple places within this corridor. So when we talk about a holistic approach to looking at this, um, rather than kind of going, you know, to the three streets where we've identified a problem, you know, we start at one end and we look at the other and we say, okay, what can we do to potentially change this? And, you know, the things that we can look at are changes, substantive changes to parking that would allow some sort of realignment of those bike lanes and maybe even some sort of realignment of how the road is actually striped. Um, and that would be an example of kind of a holistic approach to a corridor, which uh, seems to be problematic for all the reasons that we've talked about. So I just want to clarify that, um, you know, that that's one way to go about this. Um, the other way to go about it is a sort of surgical street by street approach and say, okay, where are the conflict points? Can we put up signage? Can we strike the ground? Can we engage in more enforcement? Um, and will that satisfy all of the concerns that we've heard here today, including um, the, the need to uh, hold parking uh, for for the businesses that are operating in the area? So there there's kind of a couple of different directions we can go in. Um, so I just want to clarify the kind of our use of the word holistic um, uh, for those who've brought it up. Um, any uh, further comments from any members of the commission uh, on this? So it, at this point, it, I think we've had a good discussion on this. Um, it Typically, it, what happens is we've heard a lot of input here and we need to take a closer look at it the best way forward. Um, we have uh, communication between the police department, the planning department, uh, parking enforcement. Um, we engage with uh, the Ward City Councilor um, in the area to represent uh, the residents and, and businesses. Um, we're not going to surprise anybody. So we need to take everything that we have heard here and uh, we need to kind of uh, reconvene internally and we will uh, have some sort of announcement of next steps at a future meeting. So I just want to make sure there's no further comments on this um, before we move on to the rest of our agenda. Anyone else on the commission? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move to our next item, which is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Ryan Road at Burt's Pit Road. Um, so we get a lot of requests for um, uh, particular intersections, um, and this is one of them was submitted to us uh, last August. So the resident's concern um, is that there are vehicles speeding in both directions um, at this intersection. Um, and 
I, I do have one engineering comment about this intersection, um, which is that uh, Ryan Road was uh, paved in 2017. Burt's Pit Road has a stop sign while Ryan Road is free flow. Um, so sometimes at intersections like this where traffic is free flow in one direction and stopping in another direction, there can be the potential for conflict. Um, Chief, do you have uh, anything you'd like to add uh, about this uh, intersection? I do have the uh, five-year collision analysis that we conducted the stretch of Ryan Road from 802 to 884 and there was only one collision that occurred in the last five years, and that was a driver traveling eastbound on Ryan Road that lost control of his vehicle and hit some trees. And at that time, road conditions were wet and slippery, so this was considered a contributing factor. Uh, we also collected speed data, speed data in the area of 892 Ryan Road from May 22nd through May 31st of 22, during that time, we measured the speeds of just about 23,000 vehicles. The posted speed, I believe, is 30. The average speed was 35. And the 85th percentile speed was 39.7. So consequently, this is an area where we definitely have a speeding problem. I know as a result of that data, we're also doing directed enforcement in that area. That's everything. Thank you. OK, thanks, Chief. Um, any comments from any members of the commission on this intersection? Okay, any members of the public here? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see your hand. Sorry, I was a little late to the hand raising party. Um, it's just to say that it's a, it's another one that's kind of a visually confusing intersection as well. I think I was I was trying to pull up the map um, to really refresh, but the way if you're coming through the way the streets meet is one that I can see being confusing for drivers. There's kind of a lot visually going on that that um, might not meet what they're expecting. Yeah, agreed. Thank you for that comment. Anyone else in the commission have any comments for us? Sure, I'll, I'll just jump in and say, you know, as a cyclist, I, I often find myself going out uh, Burt's Pit Road and taking a left on Ryan and uh, it's a typical way I, I go out into the less populated areas. And, and that's always an intersection that I, I am very careful at because it's true. They do come out, they do come down uh, pretty fast and it's a little bit of a blind corner there. And so caution is required. And certainly just given uh, the chief's uh, stats, like, you know, if the, if there's recommendations that DPW has to do to that intersection, I, I can certainly see how it's warranted. Yeah, oh, thanks, Jamie. Yeah, agreed. That's a, that's a um, it, it's kind of a, a strange alignment of that intersection. Any other comments from members of the commission? Okay, anyone here from the public who wishes to speak to us about this intersection? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we will. Um, we will be in touch uh, when we have uh, some further action that we propose. Okay, next is a discussion of the traffic calming request for Bancroft Road. So this was submitted to us uh, in October of 2022, um, and it is a speeding concern. Um, the resident is looking for slow children signs or the potential for speed humps. So Chief, do you have uh, comments for us on this? I do. We did a five-year collision analysis and found two accidents. One was in 2017, and that was a person backing out of a driveway and striking a parked car. The second was in 2018 and also involved a person striking a parked car. So both, n neither one of those was believed to be obviously speed related. Um, regarding speed data, a covert speed collection device was put in place in the area of 76 Bancroft Road uh, from July 20th through August 4th in 2023. We collected the speeds of about 1,200 vehicles. The average speed was 15, and the 85th percentile speed was 19.2. So this was not determined to be an area where we detected a significant speeding issue. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks, Chief. Um, just a couple of engineering comments. Um, I, one of the things that um, the the person who wrote into us requested was the potential for some um, slow children signs. Um, I, these, it, I, I just want to note for the commission that these signs are considered to be non-standard. They used to be um, installed quite widely, like in the 70s and um, 80s, and you see sort of artifacts of that around town in various places. But if you look closely, these signs are uh, quite old and quite faded, and we retire them um, when we have the opportunity. There's um, been multiple studies um, done through various uh, transportation divisions in various states, and uh, the signs have proven to be be uh, ineffective and actually contribute to uh, what we call sign clutter, you know, like the more signs you put up and, and sort of folks are, are not um, even acknowledging the existence of the signs because there's so many of them. So when we do put a sign up in the public right away, we want to make sure that it is going to um, be effective and, and sort of deliver the message we're trying to deliver. So that's just a comment uh, about that signage for the commission. Um, so is there any comments from anyone in the commission on uh, Bancroft for us? Okay, any members of the public who are here from Bancroft who wish to speak to us or have any comments for us? Okay, not many comments on Bancroft. All right, so like uh, like the intersection at Ryan and Burt's Pit, we will uh, review all the data we've collected and, and uh, have something at a future meeting. Okay, next are updates from the commission chair and vice chair about previously submitted traffic calming requests. Um, I do have one comment that's not on the agenda, but I feel like it's just an important update. Um, I wanna mention that we have uh, signed it and I neglected to, um, to say this during my re report from the DPW, we have Fuss and O'Neill, um, we have engaged Fuss and O'Neill to study uh, six intersections for us, many as a result of what we've talked about at this commission. Hinkley Street at Warner Street, Laurel Street at Route 66, Redford Drive at Burt's Pit Road, Prospect Street at Crescent Street, Federal Street at Riverside Drive and Cook Avenue at Hatfield Street. So that's gonna be a lengthy multi-month study of all of those intersections um, that will have um, a report with recommendations. Sometimes I recommend you know, stop signs or yield signs or, or um, other mitigating measures. So um, we will report back to the commission when, when we have some information from them. Um, so next is a uh, traffic calming response form for Audubon Road. Um, so we have reviewed the accident data and the speed data and the traffic calming request. And, um, you know, we, we have uh, discussed this previously at this commission. Um, so our recommendation for Audubon Road is that we paint double yellow center lines and solid white edge lines along the entire length of the road. We're going to put in reflective delineators behind the curb to just call motorists' attention to, um, uh, to various places where there's a curb in the roadway. And um, we are going to uh, install some reminder 30 mile an hour speed limit signs. Um, so that's work that will be completed next year as part of our next line striping contract. So I don't know if anyone has any comments about Audubon Road. Questions about Audubon Road? Any members of the public have any comments about Audubon Road for us? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Um, next, we have uh, the Village Hill neighborhood traffic calming request for Village Hill Road. So again, had a conversation about this at this commission, uh, reviewed collision and speed data. Um, there is not a speeding issue in this area. Um, the, a lot of the concern that we heard about was pedestrians uh, in crosswalks. Uh, we have found the in-crosswalk pedestrian markers to be quite effective. Um, and so, it, you know, we will seasonally put those out to the extent that we are able to. Um, and we actually um, did put a couple out as in response to this traffic calming request. Um, 
just note that that's not something I can leave out year round um, because we have to be mindful of our uh, snow plowing and de-icing operations. So are there any comments on this Village Hill Road traffic calming request, either from the commission or from members of the public? Okay. Oh, I see one hand, Betty. All right, Betty, we're going to unmute you. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm very excited about the study that's going to be done on Hatfield and Cook. I live at 307 Hatfield Street, and I was just curious, is there any way that we can be involved in the study or assist in the study or document stuff for the study? <laughs> and will we be able to know where speed tracking things will be set up on the street if that's part of the study? Um, Betty, if you would, um, I, I'm gonna, um, uh, have Cindy put our, um, our email address in the comments in the chat for you. If you wouldn't mind sending us a email and we will communicate with you via email. Cindy, if you could, um, just put our, our address in the chat, it's DPW info, I N F O at Northampton MA.gov. So that should be right on the screen for everybody to see. And you are uh, welcome to send us an email and we will communicate with you that way. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Okay. Any other comments on village Hill road traffic coming request? Okay, so um, last we have the Olander Drive traffic calming request. So again, discussed at this commission, reviewed collision and speed data. Um, so we did not find any speeding or collision uh, problems on Olander Drive. So I, I think that um, we have covered this um, earlier in the meeting with uh, a stop control, a stop sign control at Olander Drive and Ford Crossing. So we consider um, this to be resolved. Any comments from the commission on this uh, or uh, any members of the public? Okay, seeing and hearing none, does anyone have any new business? Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved by Devin. And second by Jamie. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> okay. All right, Beth, please call the roll. Wait, there's someone iPhone hand up. Yeah, I think we're um, we're past that point in the meeting. So um, for the person who has their hand up on the iPhone, our email address is um, is in the chat. You are more than welcome to comment uh, or send us an email uh, uh, at that address. So DPW info, DPW info at NorthamptonMA.gov. Okay, motion on the floor to adjourn. Beth, please call the roll. Anna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam? Yes. That's uh, nine, nine yeses. Okay, thanks everyone, we'll see you next month.